Hello. Hey. Hey, everyone. How's Good morning. morning. Yeah. Morning, Adam. Good morning. How are you? Good. Happy Friday. Yeah. Uh, end of the week. Mm-hmm. 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 How's it there? Hot? Uh, yeah. Hot has been raining, like, nonstop this whole week, too. So mm. it's very humid, more humid mm. than what normally is. So you go outside for, like, five seconds, and you're sweating mm-hmm. like crazy. So... You feel like you stepped into the shower. Yep, pretty much. Uh, I saw a a video. Someone asked, what does it feel like living in Florida? And this guy basically took his shirt, dipped it in the pool, and then put it on. And he said, that's what it's like living in Florida, which is true. You walk outside and you're you're freaking soaked. So, yeah. Nice. Well, yeah. Well, the problem here is that, uh, like, we eat in, like, Korean food, you eat quite a lot of, like, onions and garlic and stuff is like in a lot of the foods so you get to smell them pretty ripe at least i do yeah when you're really super sweaty so i just have to try to watch what i eat i guess yeah yeah uh but yeah well it's all rainy season should be starting here anytime soon so uh not looking forward to that but hopefully it won't be quite as bad as last year last year the rainy season was like extra long no way like hardly any summer but uh, hopefully this year it'll just be over pretty quick. And we can enjoy the summertime. But today we've got a lot of, of cool stuff to talk about and to show yes. and to give yeah. away today. Uh, giveaway wise, I have a surprise giveaway item as well too, aside from the Mark V. So Adam, you wanna show us that one here first? Boom. Boom. Big, it is thick, big kit. There's a lot in here. Mm. It's a monster kit. Yep. An awesome kit. I hope you got one to save for yourself as well, too. I did. I actually op- opened yeah. it up uh, last night, and I started looking at the runners, and uh, I got a little overwhelmed. I was like, I'm not going to start this right now. But <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll start working on it this weekend and, and getting it put together. No, I hope you get some time, yeah. It's yeah. an awesome kit. Yeah, definitely. Loved that kit uh, and loved working on painting that kit. If you guys haven't seen my video of uh, showing my painted version, Check that out. I just posted that a couple days ago. Black painted version. So that came out really cool. Really happy with that. So we'll be giving away that kit uh, at the end of the show today. But also, surprise edition. We're going to be giving away this B kit. And you might be thinking, didn't you already give that away? Uh, I tried to. And the yeah. person who won has not gotten in touch with me. So it's been a few weeks and haven't heard anything. So we're going to choose a new winner for the B kit today. So we'll do that later on. As well too. Uh, nice. on the video. And if that was not exciting enough, the other big <laughs> news, of course, is that we've got a new contest to announce yes. for you guys. So that's very exciting. Uh, and we'll do that. Uh, I don't want to do that quite right away. Uh, we'll wait a little bit and answer some questions. Then we'll come back to that. Maybe once we get some more people in, it's kind of early. We just started off. So yeah. we'll let some people kind of roam into the video and then we'll get to talking about the Big announcement of the contest here in just a little bit, but uh, Adam, for now, you know, just noticing my mic is like way over here. Hope you guys can hear me. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm I could hear you. I could hear you. All right. Uh, anything uh, new coming to stock there? Anything new? To talk um, about? So nothing like super new. Um, we continue every week to get the unleashed uh, kits in that we have in. Like we had a. You know, we were on a call with Bandai in November, December, and placed a huge second order, actually a huge order all together, and they only gave us part, you know, for December, and then the rest were supposed to be, I think it was like March or April, and I guess Bandai is just little by little, just slowly mm-hmm. shipping them out. So every week we're getting in uh, about 60 to 100 units in um, from that big order that we had, so... Mm. If you have an Unleashed kit, just keep an eye out. We are getting them in every single week, and we're shipping them as we get them in. Um, so definitely appreciate your patience with that. I know Bluefin uh, Bandai just sent out an email yesterday saying that they're being hit hard by all the delays, and, and it's mm. hard for them to find containers to get stuff shipped over here. So um, they sent a long email about that. Mm. So little by little, we're, we're getting in more kits and, and – uh, getting in you know, the pre-orders that are getting released in Japan and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. little by little guys. <laughs> you reckon that it has, uh, it has to do with uh, a lot of 
a lot of places in the world, like a lot of code restrictions being lifted in a lot of places. So, I mean, not only Gumpla, but just lots of yeah. stuff being traded more so now. So like the available space for shipping Gumpla on containers is yeah. probably less, Shrink, I would yeah. assume, right? Shrinking and shrinking every day as more countries yeah. open back up. And mm -hmm. then, you know, it's, you know, they don't have enough containers or not, none of ships. And it's just, it's crazy. <laughs> when we were dealing with um, SMS paint, uh, there's only mm -hmm. a, there's a very small few container ships that are able to carry um, toxic goods. So that's considered a toxic good because it's paint. So mm -hmm. it, it is taking longer and longer to actually get mm -hmm. the, the, the paint shipments here from SMS because of that. So it's, it's interesting how the world logistics is changing every single day. It's like mm -hmm. fighting tooth and nail to, to find just a container to put something in versus mm -hmm. a ship to put that container on. Um, yep. so. Yep. Yeah. Uh, in my video a couple of days ago talking about uh, P Bandai, one of the things, one of the comments that uh, came up a couple of times I saw were people saying, like, the Bandai is leaving so much money on the table, not sending out more stuff to other countries. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm sure they would if they could. <laughs> but yeah. they, first of all, they can't keep up with the capacity, they can't keep up with the demand. And then the shipping problem as well, too. It just can't get space to send more kits, yeah. even whatever kits they have to send. Yeah, it's, so it's uh it's just crazy. Mm -hmm. But I mean it's a good thing. Eventually things will oh, yeah. catch up to where it's enough ships, enough containers. So little by little we'll get there. And quit acting like y'all don't have <laughs> backlog to build anyway. You know you got plenty of kits to build. You don't need to sit around complaining and waiting that the new kit's not here yet. Yeah. So anyway, uh, any other news? Anything else exciting? Uh, yeah, we um, just got approved to be able to start selling Pokemon cards. So that's pretty cool. So we'll be getting those in stock. I know a lot of people have been asking us to get other things like that. Um, we'll be getting a lot of like Kids Logic D and D stuff. We'll be getting in hmm. um, just a, a lot more kind of hobby type uh, des um, tabletop game things and, and, and things like that. So. A lot of cool stuff to come here in the future as well. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Yes, yes, yes. So definitely. So you guys will have one-stop shop. Yeah. Pokemon yeah. cards in there too. Good to go. Good to go. Very cool. Uh, all right. So as usual, and because we've got a big, beautiful kit to give away, we've got extra comments today. Uh -huh, yeah. <laughs> Plenty of comments to go through. Uh, so we won't get through all the questions, but uh, just again, a reminder to you guys, you know, if you're watching live, we're taking the questions here first, just from uh, the different social media pages where we posted uh, previously yesterday, or I made a post there. So from the Facebook page here, we'll start off with some of these. Mark Kendall asked, how is the stock in your storefront looking? I stopped by about a month ago and the kit storage was really evident. A kit shortage, sorry, was really evident in the amount of stock available. Uh, have recent shipments allowed you to restock things in the storefront? Yeah, so um, our now our stock now in our storefront is actually way better than it is on our li on online store. Uh -huh. um, I think we have like thirty master grades in stock over there, most of the real grades, and and the reason why that is is we'll take five out of our online store put it over mm -hmm. there obviously less people go into our storefront so it yeah, you know it'll stay on the shelf a lot longer mm -hmm. versus it you know selling out on the online store in four or five days so yeah, yeah no our, our storefront um definitely has a lot better stock in there uh we did change it up a little bit probably since he's been here um mm -hmm. so you know come back check it out uh yeah. let us know what you think when, when you do come yeah. back i feel like i remember seeing mark's post about visiting there um, I feel like I remember I saw something about that on Instagram or something. Maybe he posted a picture when he visited there. Sounds familiar. Nice. Yeah. Uh, Rebecca asked, any tips on getting P Bandai kits uh, after pre-orders close? I keep missing the pre-orders. <laughs> for example, the Leo S uh, pre-orders were only up for two whole days. Yeah, I mean, eBay, if you're here in the US, uh, you're obviously going to pay more than what you would have. Mm -hmm. um from the USPP and I site but yeah eBay I think I started seeing people start reselling stuff on Amazon too um but I think eBay is cheaper than Amazon uh cuz people are trying to get a, a you know they'll charge more for that 20% uh fee that toys get on Amazon so mm -hmm. they'll be I think eBay only charges uh I think it's at 8% now for toys so mm -hmm. yeah um 
Yeah, I mean, I don't know what the comparison will be uh, as to getting it from eBay in America or getting it through a secondhand shop online in Japan. Um, obviously, probably if you get it from like Mandrake or Amyami in Japan, then the pr kit price will be much cheaper, but then you're paying a lot more for shipping. So you'd have to kind of compare. Uh, another thing you could always do is, I mean, uh, just post in like a Facebook group. Some Facebook groups allow this and some don't. So you have to check, but you just say that you're looking to buy a whatever kit and you never know, maybe someone bought it and they're kind of regret buying it. Or they don't really care to keep it or maybe they already built it and they don't want to keep it. So yeah. you never know, you might find someone who's <clears throat> willing to part with it and they'd probably sell it to you, I would assume, for probably a little bit cheaper than what you'd pay for it on eBay or whatever. So it's worth a try as well too. Uh, Jay asked, would you ever think about doing a custom sticker pack of one's choosing? Uh, so to choose which stickers and create their own sticker pack, uh, it's for those who have some of the stickers already, but yeah. missed one or two for a certain month. Um, yeah, I mean, that's a really, really good idea. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's a, you would think it's like a no brainer. The hard part is the back end of that, um, mm -hmm. setting up it, the website where people can choose the stickers is probably the easy part, but actually getting it our back end system to where the picker it picks the right stickers um, mm -hmm. would be a little bit more difficult. Um, mm -hmm. So it's it's something I've looked into actually. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Is it something that we'll do soon? Probably not, but probably in the future um, we'll get it worked out to where it's uh, uh, viable to do. So yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. It would be. Yeah, I understand how that could be complicated, but yeah, I mean, for the yeah. for the customer, it would be great. Right? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm sure people would enjoy that. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, all right. Um, Duck asked, uh, "When do you think Bandai will release the HMS Team 2.0 Master Grade kits? What frame would they reuse, or would they make it from scratch?" Um, I would. Because 2.0, I would hope they'd make a new frame. Um, yeah, they could adapt the 2.0 Gundam gym frame, I suppose, probably. But yeah, I would also hope, yeah. I would prefer they just made a new frame. But. Yeah, I mean, they could probably take some parts from that. Mm. But yeah, I, I would I would hope it would be a new frame. Um, mm. When will they? No, obviously, no clue. Um, yeah. Hopefully sooner than later, because those, mm. those would be really cool kits. But those are pretty solid kits um mm. the two that i built anyways yeah. um are, are not bad kits at all right now so yeah there's yeah that, other go on I'm sorry oh, <laughs> no. As, there's other kits i could i would rather them do a 2.0 of yeah. than those yeah totally uh yeah they're ones that uh, i think do stand up pretty well for their age uh, for how old those kits are the the ground gundam the ground gym the gym sniper yeah. and the easy eight are all kind of based off of the same kit and yeah they hold up pretty well but i mean yeah it's it's one of those cases kind of similar to like the dom uh the dom is one that i think is the old master grade holds up really well yeah uh, does it, so it does it need a 2.0 no but would it 2.0 be awesome yes i'm sure <laughs> so like yeah i'd love to see it but i mean as far as like priority it, i don't think it would be at the top of the list but yeah, and I don't know because they announced that it was a it's a one point five, right? If I remember correctly, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then they announced that at the beginning of this year, and then we mm -hmm. still haven't heard anything about its release, which mm -hmm. is interesting. But um, I don't like when they do the one point fives. I rather them just do a full mm -hmm. a full two point oh personally. But... Yeah, at least as a standard release. If they were to make yeah. that as a P band item, I can understand. You know. Right, right. Uh, considering the Dom is like one of the main Xeon mobile suits, though, from One Year War, it seems kind of silly to release that as just a P Bandai because yeah. obviously it's a design that would surely sell loads. Uh, but yeah, I I agree with the Ghost Monkey Customs there in the chat. Goof Custom 2.0, actually, yeah, the Goof yeah. Custom needs the 2.0 much more than the uh, EFSF mobile suits from that yeah. series, definitely. Yes, indeed. Uh, all right. Jimmy asked, what is your favorite detail part? Uh, what is your favorite detail parts to you lately? I've been using the photo edge parts and apex vents and heat sinks. Yeah. Um, so for me, I, I love the photo edge parts personally. Mm -hmm. um, I obviously have been using our, our apex parts too, which I, I mm -hmm. think those are, you know, obviously biasly speaking, very good. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, I mean, it's photo edge. 
it's, well, it's, it's metal, yeah. You know? yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I've, I've been using those, uh, wave parts are, are pretty good too. Um, so, and then every now and then I'll use some metal thrusters, um, veneers or something like that from high Q or, or mm -hmm. um, sometimes I'll put those on as well. Mm -hmm. but, uh, uh, yeah, as for me, yeah, I, I find like the 3d printed parts a little bit trickier to use just because of the, the nature of them or you're kind of like adding on. So you have to kind of either do a lot of customization on the kit to match the 3d printed part or find a kit where like the detail kind of matches. So that's, uh, the photo edge parts are much easier to apply to just kind of anything I feel like. Uh, so I use those much more often. Um, than the 3D printed parts, but the 3D printed, I mean, there's a lot, there's a ton of really cool yeah. ones though. Yeah, <laughs> so I want to use them more, but I just have a harder time matching them up with the uh, kits that they go with and like places where they fit. But uh, Hunter said, do you think we'd ever see a release, P Bandai or normal release of either a MG upgrade kit of full model for the Gump from Crossbones Victory? I don't know what the Gump is. I don't either. Actually, yeah. I have to Google that. I don't even know what that is. Gump. Okay, here it is. Uh, I'll put this on the screen for you. There you go. Uh, yeah. yeah, I don't know. It's not a design I'm familiar with. Uh, okay, yeah, it's that peg leg one. I think maybe I've seen this before. Yeah, it's got that big claw. Yeah, I think I've seen this before, like a custom build in a magazine someone made. Uh, I, of I don't this. Think uh, I don't think we'll see this yeah. for for many years, honestly. Either P Bandai or regular. Yeah, I would be very surprised if. I mean, you never know. It's one of those ones that's just super obscure. I mean, yeah. it, it it could come out much sooner than later as just something random. I mean, Bandai does. They did that uh, that weird like hand kit, whatever. I forget what's called the dick 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 dicta something like that. Dictus. Yeah. That one, <clears throat> that was out of left field and completely weird and random. So I mean, you never know, but yeah, it's not something that I would expect to see anytime soon. Yeah, yeah. It's just when you have to just wish upon a star and hope to get lucky. Uh, Thomas asked, "Will you be doing pre-orders of the Sazabi metal structure, and when do you think they will start?" The Sazabi metal structure. Hmm. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, that's a very good question. Um, so mm -hmm. one, uh, we have no clue when that's gonna even come out. Um, I I don't even think they had a prototype thing, right? Did they have a? They, uh, I think so. I, I mean, I we've seen was... images of it, but I don't know if they were three D renders or like an actual prototype. I, I want to say that they were like an actual prototype. I, I thought it was a just like a. I'm gonna have to look, but I thought it was just like a display that had a picture, or maybe that maybe I've, there's things that have come out since then because um, you look very confused about that. Uh, yeah, it's been a while. That's the problem. Yeah, yeah, we saw that a while ago, and like have never. It's just like the 1.5 DOM. Like we saw it yeah. and then never uh, heard anything else about it again. Well, but I, did, as far as I can remember, it was a, a few different angle photos okay. of like an actual prototype. I think. I know when they talked about the new, when they first announced that, it was like a year and a half later mm. that we got some. And then what they did here in the States is they gave, uh, they allocated specific amounts to specific mm. places and then Bluefin actually kept some themselves. Now that was also before the USP Bandai site. So yeah. I would be willing to bet now, which I would hate that they mm. would just keep them all themselves and sell them on the PB and I site is most likely mm. what will happen. Um, I pray and hope it's not the case, <laughs> but um, just knowing what has happened before in the past, I would be, I would be willing to bet that's what will happen. Mm, yep. Mm. Yep, yep. Yep. Sounds about right to me. Yep. <laughs> All right. Uh, have y'all, uh, Sean asked, have y'all considered doing a private warehouse concept similar to HLJ? Plenty of kits I'd love to pick up individually when they're in stock, but I will wait to ship them in a bigger order. Yes. Yeah, we, we've talked about that before. Yeah. Um, and it kind of goes in the same kind of logistical back end, 
um, WMS, which is just where ma warehouse management software um, mm -hmm. dilemma on how to actually get that set up. Does our, our WMS allow for that? Yes. Does Shopify allow for it? No. So mm -hmm. figuring out how to do that um, on Shopify, because that's kind of the platform we use, um, is the hard part. Um, mm -hmm. So, but we, it is it is a work in progress. Is it something we're working on every day? No. Um, so I know someone asked in the chat about a firm. That's kind of a good way to do it. Unfortunately, a firm doesn't allow for pre-orders. Um, mm -hmm. So we can't have a firm on our site if we offer pre-order items, um, mm -hmm. which is why some other sites have a firm because they don't do pre-orders. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a, what you know, which one do you want? Do you want to be able to yeah. reserve items for people or do you want to just not do that? So, yep. Mm. Yes, indeed. So the short answer is, uh, Hopefully, it will be available in the future, but it's undetermined. Yeah, we would honestly, uh, unless Shopify did some sort of update, we would mm -hmm. actually have to come off of Shopify, host mm -hmm. our own servers, and, and host our own website um, mm -hmm. off of Shopify and before that ever happened, is what it, unless Shopify does some sort of update where they allow for that kind of process. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Christine asked, what life-size Gundam model would you like to see Japan build next? This is the easy one for me. I know. Is it an exactly. easy one? So I would like the Sananju Stein, but... <laughs> In one-to-one -one scale, it'd be huge. I know. It would be I amazing. Like the unicorn, I guess, but... It'd be great. For me, it's just Zaku 2. I just want to see a big Zaku 2. Yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be After, cool. I mean, maybe not as huge and impressive but i mean after the one to one scale gundam i thought i mean like if they if you asked me okay they're going to do another one i would say oh maybe shar zaku yeah, yeah everybody loves shar especially in japan yeah. super popular they moved the um where did they move the one to one rx78 to uh i want to say it's supposedly at their shizuoka factory i believe okay. or shizuoka headquarters okay It'd be cool oh. to see those both together. That'd be kind of neat mm -hmm. if they ever did mm -hmm. a, a one to one yeah. Zaku. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, yeah, I would love to see that. Uh, all right. Kai said, any word on the MG Barbatos LED kit? Uh, any day. I mean, I know I, we, we keep saying that. So, with the Chinese mm -hmm. kits and stuff coming over from China, um, it's a little bit harder to track that because we're actually mm -hmm. importing it over. So it's in a container. I'll get a container number and I can search for that container number on a website that will tell me where the ship is. And usually the China stuff that it, it gets to uh, San Diego and then it sits off the port um, for about a week because they're so backlogged. And then it sits at, after it gets unloaded off the ship, then it sits, um at the dock for another like four or five weeks and then mm -hmm. customs finally looks at it and then we get you know give them whatever documents they need so it's a very long drawn out process right now just because of how backed up everybody is um it's it's when you actually deal with it and realize how you know mm -hmm. before you know the ship would right when it got to san diego it got unloaded that day um customs would get the report that day for what's in that container. They'd let you know if they need any paperwork, you get it all finished, done, and then it ships out, you know, maybe within one or two days. Now it's taking mm -hmm. one or two months. So it's, um, it is ridiculous, but we just got in. Um, actually, I want to show these off. Like we just got in this yesterday, the mm -hmm. uh, Tang Tang. Um, we got in the uh, Iron Man kits. Ooh, yes. So we, we, we are getting some of the Chinese stuff little by little. So we got a bunch of stuff yesterday. We got the heavy weapon systems for the uh, real gray new came in yesterday too. So little by little stuff's coming in. As soon as we get it in, we will definitely get out emails and, and uh, letting you know. And we'll, uh, we actually have a new email system. So mm -hmm. when we finally get uh, information that something is on its way to us, we'll send out an email and people know, Hey, your pre-order should be shipping in a week. And then you'll get an email when it does ship too. So you'll kind of have a pre-warning system if you need to change your address or something like that. Um, you know, we are have we have a new email system. Bless you. Um, that will. Uh, did you sneeze? All right. <laughs> 
So kind of keep an eye out for for your emails. Yes, All right. I do. Please. All right. <laughs> All right, uh, we'll take a couple more here from Facebook and then before switching over to Instagram for some more questions, uh, we'll we'll talk about the contest. So yeah. for those of you guys waiting to hear what about the new contest, uh, hang on, we'll just do a couple more questions here and then we'll get into that. So uh, Juan said, if you were to custom build a kit that you already have built before, uh, what would the kit be and why? Um, so, that's an interesting question because they've now made kits that I have had to get. Uh, for example, the Mark V, I got, uh, I think it was, um, it wasn't G System. Was it Coreworks? Uh, Coreworks has a resin one that uh, I built. Well, now I'm obviously building the Master uh, one. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, for that example, that I guess would be um, there. If it's something that is a Bandai kit that I built that now that I've learned more on how to do more, um, probably a freedom because I haven't, uh, I, I built the, the 1.0 freedom master grade. Mm -hmm. That was like my third kit I ever built. Um, and I definitely like that design a lot, yeah. uh, but obviously now they have a 2.0, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, knowing what I know and different skills that I have now, I, I would, I would like to redo that eventually. Hmm. Uh, yeah, for me, shoot, I don't know uh there's a lot there's uh, i don't know yeah a lot there's, yeah. There's, there's so many i mean the the hg high gog is one uh, kit that is the one that i've actually built and painted twice and uh, i wouldn't mind doing another one of those it's such a fun kit to work on uh <clears throat> the master grade 3.0 gundam uh every time i see it like it's never one that i like have in my mind like yeah i want to pick up a uh, a 3.0 mg but every time i see it painted on online i always think man it's such a great looking kit when it was this painted i always think ah, i should get another one of those painted someday um but yeah there's a lot of stuff i mean there's yeah probably almost I, i'm it'd be an easier question to answer if you say like which kit have you painted that you would not want to paint again yeah yeah that would be easier because like uh yeah, most more much more often than not, I had a lot of fun working on the kits that I've worked on, and I would totally be down to work on them again. Yeah, so I guess that's it's good, right? <laughs> yep. All right. Uh, Elias asked, any news on a restock of the MG RX seventy eight two uh, Origin version? MG, uh, no. Origin Gundam. No, we get a um. So at least up to October uh no like the 3.0 uh, yes they should be coming back in um i should from what i was told either today or monday we'll get our order form for november december they might be on that i'm not sure yet but as far as uh, like i said up to up to october there is no uh reprint scheduled for those bummer that's another really great kit yeah uh, all right, let's see. Last one here we'll take from Facebook for today. Michael asks, what older kits would you like to see remade into the higher quality models we see today? Uh, I know a lot of older kits uh, like from Gundam Wing, but I think like the models of Mercurius and the Vate and Hydra would sell very well. So yeah, like kind of similar like 90s HG or just like 90s non-gray 100 scale, 144 scale kits, these kind of things. Or 80s even. Yeah, um, I mean, if we're going, the Serpent, I think, would be uh, a mm -hmm. cool one for talking wing kits. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that'd be pretty easy for them to do since, and they, they might do that pretty soon. Uh, you know, they've been doing mm. front type suits here and there uh, from different things. So that'd be kind of cool. That'd be a really good candidate for a full mechanics kit, I think. Yeah. 100 yeah. scale, actually. Yeah. Did you see that uh, teaser for the Sword Calamity? I did not. No, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it two days when they announced all that other new stuff? There was like a little oh, yeah. teaser. Oh, really? For it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the other thing I wanted to do uh, with for us in this episode because Ben, I just dropped a bunch of news. Like half the <laughs> stuff was stuff I mean, we we kind of knew was coming out, but <clears throat> yeah, they did drop a bunch of news, including uh, what was that? The full weapons version of the entry grade kit that looks cool. Yep, that's cool. The uh, revive Zaku. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Something like uh, we knew it was going to come out eventually. Yeah, yeah. We finally released that kind of without any pump and circumstance, just like uh, that, that's also coming up. Yep, yep. 
uh, like all the new HD kits from the new uh, Gunbreaker series, yep. which all look pretty weird, but if that's your thing, I don't know if I'm really into them too much. How about you? Um, I like the Quan T one uh, a lot. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I do yeah. like that one. That design looks pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. That's probably one of the better ones, definitely. Um, the uh, Death Scythe Hell kind of flavored one, the white one, looks yeah. kind, of, kind of cool as well, too. Kind of, yeah. kind of cool mohawk on the head as well. Yeah. Um, the other thing was the new RG Ava, the uh, Ava Unit 3. three. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it doesn't have the extra arms to come out of the back. Nope. How ridiculous! It comes with a giant shield though, which is great for yeah. your Ava Unit Zero. Uh, I mean, that should have come out with the Ava <clears throat> Unit Two. I thought yeah. they should have made the DX Unit Two to come with that, but whatever. What I don't know how they're going to make the Unit Three and not have the extra arms. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Yes. That's the the. That Ava's in one episode, and like that's the one thing that it does in the episode. It walks and it gets extra arms. <laughs> that's it. Crazy. Well, maybe know. they'll. Maybe they still will. Fingers crossed. They won't. But... <laughs> <laughs> no, they won't. I mean, they're if just they using. That, if they don't show it from the start, it's not. Coming. Yeah. I mean, they're just using the same molds over and over again to make them. So. Yeah. They would have yeah, had to do, yeah. I mean, do something completely different. Make a new mold for. Yeah. Whatever. So. Yeah, not surprising at all that they're going ahead and just making it in general because, yeah, it's just, for the most part, recycled parts uh, again. But still very disappointing about that. So I don't know. Yeah. That sucks. But uh, some cool stuff. Also, they had a couple of new Digimon kits, which, again, are kind of like mm -hmm. uh, just like the TV versions, basically. Yeah. Right? Uh, the original yeah. versions of the those couple of ones. Um, a new Batman uh, figure yeah. eyes. Yeah, uh, the figure eyes amplified. Batman, yeah. Yep, saw that. It looks like it's going to be the one where he's in the armor where he fights Superman. Is what uh, the silhouette yeah. kind of looked like to me, but something like that. Yeah. Uh, new '86 kits, new versions of the '86 tanks, and then that's new. Uh, what was it Big Tony? Uh, yeah. HG. Yeah. Big Tony. That looks super cool. It I don't does. even. I don't know what that is, but it looks cool. It was like an anime, or it might have been a movie or something like that. An uh -huh. Animated. Uh, so I, I'm. I remember seeing. I remember seeing stuff. Seeing that months ago, and then nothing yeah, 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 it. It, yeah, it looked familiar. Yeah, I think I remember seeing a trailer or something like that as well too. The anime, not the kit. Anyway, so yeah, there was a lot of cool stuff yeah. that Bandai just announced, uh, and uh, I'm, I'm going to pronounce the name wrong. I'm sorry, Isaias. Yeah. There in the chat, asking about the <laughs> Tokyo Dumpling Guide. A couple of people have asked me about this, like kind of in recent history. So we'll maybe just mention about this yeah he's asking about the the tokyo gumpla guide on the site yeah so um that. we we had to take that off for a little bit uh because people were abusing that to get points and get mm. gift cards that they shouldn't have gotten to in the reward system so we're fixing that to where that can't be abused anymore and so mm. unfortunately some bad apples have you know result us to take that mm. off temporarily so it will be back up um hopefully sooner than later so and we'll, we'll let mm -hmm. people know. It'll be like in an email that's backed up or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Now that things are opening up and people are starting to make travel plans, I think that's yeah. why I've gotten a couple of questions about that recently. Yeah. And if you, do want, if you do want it, just send us an email and we mm -hmm. can always email you a link to it. That's not a problem, too. That's mm -hmm. actually very easy to do if you you are yep. looking to, uh, to get that because it is free. So mm -hmm. um, we do have a $5 version, too, if you want to help. You know, pay Zach, but I don't think anyone ever buys that does that one. So <laughs> there was a few at first when it first yeah, uh, there's released, literally but, I don't yeah. think anyone's done it since then. So yeah. Well, that's fine. Anyway, uh and then I like to forge uh this question here in the chat as well, too, just real quick. It's a my real question. Do I have a problem in regards to my victory in F91 collecting? How many is too many? I'm currently sitting at five MGP dashes, five for V2 Assault Buster, including a clear and titanium. Yes, Forge, you certainly do have a problem in that <laughs> regards. Can confirm. So he's one of my uh, Patreon supporters. Nice. And he, so he's in the uh, in the Discord. And so if I ever have any, <clears throat> any questions or anything regarding Victory Gundam, I know who to ask about that. Mm, nice. Uh, all right. So going over onto Instagram now, uh, Mike, Mike Skyfish asked, 
Has there been any progress on the Apex model kit to report? Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we got in a, uh, um, a sample. So what, what happens is we, we got a 3D model rendered. Uh, we sent that to a 3D printing factory. They print it up. We take a look at it, see how it is. So we got that in. Um, so reviewing that. And then we are now in the process of breaking that 3D render model kit into runners that we can again send away to get uh, molds made. So that's kind of the process and where we're at in that process right now. So fingers crossed that we will have that done and finished in about a month or two. So we can start producing them and, and get them in by December is kind of fingers crossed the idea, but the, you know, we'll, we'll see the way the world is working right now, uh, sure, how sure. fast we can get that done. It's actually the same guy that designed the judge is, uh, helping us break down and design the, uh, our cool. apex kit. So yeah, it's, it's pretty neat. That's very cool. Yeah. Uh, well, everyone, some, well, some people might be a little bit disappointed that, uh, he's not spending that time working on the next <laughs> release. Cause there's a lot of people really enjoyed that kit, but yeah, well that, that company is, I think they're releasing a figure. Their next two items are going to yeah, be yeah, yeah. like metal build figures mm -hmm. and not model kits. Um, mm -hmm. I guess over there in China, they rather have the figures so they don't have to take the time to build uh, mm -hmm. something. So I think that's mm -hmm. kind of the market in China. So that's why that company's kind of switched to doing that right now. Um, Fair play. Yep, is what it is. But yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, Gumpli Uruguay asked, what are your guesses for this year big release like the typical end of the year verka or pg or something like that so um, hey, it seems like we've got kind of everything already announced yeah uh, for this I, year I, now with the announcements that we got the other day but yeah. i mean you think there'll be any last minute surprise or something i mean i doubt know? it i think virtue is the master mm. grade of of the end of the year i think that's yeah. that's what it is um that's november I, right uh yeah so we'll get it here december probably mm. uh in the u.s and mm -hmm. I, yeah, I, I don't see unless I mean they they could you know, throw us mm -hmm. a curveball, but I think that's the kit for the end of the year. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think, man, I don't know, that's a tough one because I would have to just say it could for me. I honestly think it could go fifty fifty either way. Uh, I could see. I mean, it seems like we've got everything we're gonna get uh, announced basically so far. But it's still six months away. So, I mean, I think they could still come out with some announcement of something big to come out in December or something like that. And I don't know. Because most of the stuff that we know of that's coming out around the, the end of the year, aside from the Virtue, is like a couple of HDs. That's it, <laughs> really, basically. Yeah. The High New is, is coming out in like August, something, right? It's pretty soon. Yeah. And then after that, I don't know what's <clears throat> the next RG after that. The Ava, I mean, nothing big. Yeah. So it doesn't really, I mean, aside from the virtue, it doesn't really seem like they've got anything too big that they're going to be putting out around that time. I don't know. Uh, Mushinen, there in the chat with a good idea. Could be an MG Silver Bullet. would love to see that. Yeah, I mean, that, that could be, be cool. and that they could also make that a Verka. Uh, and yeah. that could be like a big Verka because, like I said, I don't know or don't understand why they didn't make the uh, Mark V a Verka because it basically is in every other sense of the word. Uh, but so that's kind of weird, but maybe they'll do that with the silver bullet. Yeah, possible. Yeah, totally. Uh, all right. So Backstepped asked, uh, what kit does the distributor send you way too many of? Um, so we order the stuff and we tell mm -hmm. them how much to send us. So they actually are right now sending us too little of stuff yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, they're not sending us the problem. yeah so uh yeah. we don't yeah none no, no kit because we're not even getting what we order so well, let me let me change the question a little bit and maybe put it to you like this uh what kit would you love to be able to get much more of if you could um the eclipse gundam that's uh coming out oh. okay yeah so those um were heavily allocated. So mm -hmm. if, if you haven't pre-ordered one, I'm telling you guys right now, you want to do that from whoever mm -hmm. you pre-order from because you're not going to get them. And then they're, they'll probably be for another restock in December. I would mm -hmm. assume it will be on that reprint list, but mm -hmm. 
yeah, they are, they are, you know, Bandai called me and told me how many we're getting and it's not a lot. So, uh, and I um, mean, so basically it'll be kind of going a similar route as the messer. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, pretty much. No one really expected that to be a mm-hmm. thing, but yeah, very unavailable if you're trying to get one now. So yeah, make sure so. you get that pre-order in. All right, uh, Chuckle Falcon said, yeah, what yeah. happens when there are a pile of kits that are not selling well for at least one year? Uh, that's what when you happen? see them on a sale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, we'll, we'll put them on a sale. Uh, usually we'll, you know, our summer sale will probably start here pretty quickly. I mean, if you honestly, if you go on and just type in sale in our search bar, it'll pull up already items that we already, you know, have already discounted, but they'll go on that you know if we have a whole bunch of them or need to uh need to get rid of some um yeah that's what will happen we'll send out an email um taking a certain amount off in certain kits we've done that before we we had we had ordered way way too many of those perfect grade seven swords uh like two years ago and mm-hmm. uh i don't know if anyone remembers but we put we sent out emails with like 25 percent off on those kits yeah. and stuff like that so yeah, that's what will happen just so we can sell them and get some of that uh, collateral liquid cash back to order and pay mm. for other stuff that will will sell better. So, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I would assume that's not a very common problem. <laughs> no, uh, I, especially right now, it's not. But sure. um, every now and then, you know, we'll get a whole bunch yeah. of something and it won't sell as fast as we thought or mm-hmm. as good as we thought. Or maybe the price point's too high mm-hmm. that the manufacturer wants for it. So we can get away with discounting it if we make it a sale for a specific period of time. Then mm-hmm. the Bandai doesn't get mad at us for putting it below their uh, minimum advertised pricing if we if we do a sale so sure yeah. um gn builder asked well it seems like i don't know what's the deal but uh, all kind of like friends of the show or all the, top, <laughs> the first people to comment on the instagram page or those guys are the ones who are just real quick i guess yeah uh gn builder said heard from a builder up north that stores in canada are or will be able to sell Tamiya enamel paints. Is there any word of it coming stateside? Um, I believe so. Uh, I know our manufacturer, or not manufacturer, our distributor for that product has them on their site, but the mm-hmm. date is uh, TBA, so to be oh, okay. uh, announced. So I don't know when we'll get them. They are on there, so that means that they probably already ordered them, and they're just okay. waiting for that order to get fulfilled before we can actually order them. So, yeah. Cool. Nice. Uh, let's see. Chuckle Falcon commented twice. Disqualified. <laughs> Geo builds. <laughs> Geo builds said, "Which kit would you like to see reprinted or given a 2.0?" Shannon just died. Mm. No, I mean the the, the base the, the kit's already. In. I mean, you can say the narrative version might be a 2.0, even though it's the same exact kit. No, um, no I would I would like a camphor 2.0. I think mm. that. Uh, de- definitely needs one. It's a it's a popular design. Uh, sure. I like the design. Uh, Cubely, I think would be uh, would benefit mm-hmm. too from a 2.0. Um, mm-hmm. Even a 2.0 gym, I think would be. Well, they have a 2.0 gym, don't they? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So maybe a 3.0. All right. So we'll skip the gym. Uh, then you can say like the sniper gym to like that might be like a 3.0 design. Uh-huh. Um, but. Uh, yeah, I think those two kits uh, would be would be more what I would lean towards for mm. for the next two point mm. uh, Yeah, same camphor. I think yeah, I agree. That would totally be a, a good one. Uh, like we mentioned just before, the Goof Custom as well mm-hmm. too. Uh, anything the Gundams from Stardust Memories, the GPO one, two, three, any of those. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Yeah. Everybody kind of always brings those up. Uh, I would personally really love a two point God Gundam as well too. I know you maybe not so much, but. Uh, I would love that uh, based on like kind of the two pointers that they've been able to do recently, I think are now at the level that they could really make a super nice God Gundam that could really do like everything that it should be able to do as far as like doing this crazy martial arts pose and things like that, that just like yeah. the older MG. Uh, well, I'd, I think as far as I know uh, about the older MG, not that bad, but it's another one that could totally be much better with the new proper kit. New 2.0 of that. So I don't know. Any one of those. 
Uh, and I'm just now realizing that I said that we were going to talk about the contest. Oh, <laughs> yeah, then we didn't. I no, missed that. So uh, let me just uh, take another question here, and then we'll and then we'll talk about the contest here. So Thrift Store Bandit said, is Gumpla freedom? Question mark. Um, sure. Yeah, freedom to express yourself and create something that you want to do. Um, I think many people kind of take that phrase differently, but if you mm. look at it that way, then... That's, I mean, that's how I would take it. So, yeah, yeah, I think uh, there's a lot of kind of interpretations or misinterpretations or just kind of misuse of the phrase, or people just kind of getting uh, unnecessarily aggrieved by people yeah. using the phrase. It just has, yeah, kind of been unfortunately twisted. But I think the original intention of the phrase and like its use in the anime is totally correct. I mean, I, I totally understand it when I, Saw that in the anime, I thought, yeah, makes sense. Yeah. And that is, I think, you'll hear this. Like, I've heard this from Lincoln and other people who have, like, come into Gumpla from other modeling. That's the thing that people love about Gumpla compared to other different uh, modeling genres is that it is so open. Like, you have these canon designs, but you're almost, like, encouraged to customize them to something completely original, right? Right. Uh, so... I mean that's that is the great thing about Gumpla, I mean, even even among modeling different modeling genres and stuff is that it is very wide open and yeah, great for expressing your creativity with your models. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, I I I dig the phrase, even if it's a little bit misused or whatever. Yeah, whatever. I don't care. <laughs> it's just the phrase. Who cares? Right. Anyway. Uh, we'll come back to some more of the questions here in just a minute, but let's talk about the contest. Yes, new contest. So you wanna you wanna let everybody know what the theme is gonna be, Adam? I'll let you do the honors. <laughs> um, did you get the uh, the prize stuff? I did. Yeah. yeah. We'll okay. Talk about that. All righty. Um, I'll actually let you do that. You, you're way better at talking about contest stuff. Okay. Than than, than me. Um, I okay, can talk okay. about the prizes and stuff if you want. Sure. Um, yeah. Sure. We'll do that. Okay, okay. Well, <laughs> it's going to be a 30 minutes missions theme. Yes. It's the ultimate 30 minutes missions custom contest for you guys. So uh, maybe not the most original contest idea. I know it's been done. So you, some of you guys may have already entered in a previous 30 minutes missions contest before, but we've never done one and I've never right. done one. I've always wanted to do one since the line uh, first started off. And you know, since then, they're just continuing to release all sorts more 30 minutes mission stuff. We just had a bunch of new stuff mm -hmm. coming out. We just had a bunch of new stuff announced, which won't you it won't be out in time for this contest. But uh, <laughs> the point is now the catalog is is huge enough amongst 30 minutes mission stuff that you guys should be able to come up with some very cool customs uh, with some 30 minutes missions builds. So actually, I better uh, I don't want to just put this up on the screen for us. That'll be yeah. And then there's so many different things too you can do with 30 minute mission kits. I mean, you can. I've seen people build dinosaurs out of them. I've seen uh, sure. all sorts of stuff. So um, even if you've done a, a contest from somebody else or in a Facebook group or something like that, there's so many different things you can do with these kits that that I think we thought that it would be a, a good challenge for everybody and it's inclusive for all skill levels um mm -hmm. i think was important too for some we were looking for uh doing this contest yes so on that note as far as uh being available to all skill levels so we're going to have two different categories for this one <coughs> uh as well too it is going to be so i'm just uh i want there to put go. this up on the screen for us if i can just to give us something here uh, we're going to have a painted and unpainted categories, yeah. basically, is how it's going to be broken down. So simple, easy. If you guys want to, I'm sorry, here we go. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> there we are. All right. Um, but that's not the right <coughs> one. I want to, sorry, stop that. Um, I'll get it sorted out here in a minute. <laughs> no after. problem. Uh, yeah, if you want to paint the kit, then you can go for the painted category. If you want to just leave it completely unpainted, you can go for the unpainted category. Uh, but, you know, either category, we're encouraging you guys to customize the kits, kit bash the kits. Uh, the only thing is that we're going to be giving you guys limit. And I, this is one thing that, you know, I learned 
all the way back in school and something that I totally agree with kind of as far as like the creativity process is that the more you're limited, the more creative you have to be. And so uh, limiting the time is one. So we're gonna only, you guys are only gonna have eight weeks for this. So pretty short as far as contests go. So that only goes to the deadline of August 20th. So you guys will only have until then uh, for this contest. And uh, also limiting you guys to that, you can only use 30 minutes missions parts. So basically uh, anything that comes with a 30 minutes missions logo printed on it is something that you can use in this. So any of the option parts and things like that, people are gonna ask, well, can I use like other different band option parts? If it doesn't have the 30 minutes missions logo on it, then no. So it's gotta be uh, 30 minutes missions parts only. That said, you can also use uh, like the runners that are included with that. So if you need to make like some connection pieces or something like that with just pieces of runner or something, you can use that. Um, also, people are gonna ask if they can 3D print. And in this case, no, because again, that's not 30 minutes missions branded products. Um, also, uh, scratch building. You can not scratch build like whole pieces. So if you wanna use plot plate, uh, you can use plot plate for like adding small little bits of detail and things like that. I will uh, allow that. So if you wanna just add like a, little details here and there or whatever, or you know, you need to use a, a, a couple pieces of plot plate to extend a limb or something yeah. um, that you can do. But as far as like building an entire new shield or something like that, a plot plate, so no, we're not gonna do that. So you can use a little bit of plot plate, but otherwise, Everything should just be 30 minutes missions parts. That's the thing. So um, yeah, we're just looking for creativity. That's kind of the main thing. And then of course, just execution as well too. So you have to be able to, you know, make your kit look good. That's like, as far as the nub removal, seam line removal, mold line removal, even if you're not painting the kits, we're gonna be checking your mold line removal and things like that as well too. So uh, just make sure you do all that work ahead of time, you know, while you're going through the building process, taking good care of all of that. And then of course, for the painting side, we'll also be looking at your painting and or weathering. If you do weathering, you can do that as well too. Um, you can do dioramas for this. You can also include multiple kits. So we're basically just doing it like GBWC. If you guys are familiar with the rules of GBWC, which is basically like there are no rules essentially. Uh, you can do a diorama, you can do a vignette, you can include multiple kits in the scene, but just keep in mind whatever you submit, you know, it's. It, it has just as much potential to hurt you as it does to help you. So if you make a really awesome kit and then set it in a diorama, that's kind of lackluster. It's gonna bring your whole score down a little bit by including that. So, you know, keep that in mind. And also just keep in, the mind, in mind the fact that you have a very limited time to work on this project, a relatively short contest. So, you know, don't bite off more than you can chew by trying to make a huge diorama or something like that. So right. uh, keep it tight, focus on, you know, focus on your strengths. Do something really cool, uh, you know, uh, work on uh, developing a cool idea with the kits and or, or kit or whatever you end up using for this uh, and then just, you know, focus on that. Uh, as far as how you're going to ultimately uh, show the kit as well, too, I'm not making this a requirement for you guys, but just highly recommend that you stick to one pose for the kit. Uh, so rather than uh, you're gonna submit 10 photographs for your final entry. So rather than submitting 10 photographs in 10 different poses and everything, uh, I would really highly recommend you guys to uh, stick with one good solid pose uh, and then just take 10 good photographs of it around in that pose. That's uh, much better for us for judging and it's gonna be much more beneficial for you guys as well too. If you look at like the, in the, in the past contest, the uh, clean versus weathered contest, uh, that we did. If you look at the winners of that contest, they're in static poses. All the photos that they submitted were all just in one pose. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, if you guys want to take all sorts of different pose photos, you know, for your own Instagram or whatever, for your own or sharing on Facebook or whatever, you know, by all means, you can go ahead and do that. As far as what you submit for the contest, though, just stick with one pose uh, because your posing and photography will also be part of the scoring as well, too, part of the judging. So, uh, we'll, we will be looking at that. Um, what else? So entering the contest is same as always. If you guys have entered my previous contest, you need to send an entry email first uh, to my email, Zakurilius Official. And I will have all this information posted uh, later as well too. And I'll have a video um, I'll post on my channel going through all the rules as well. Also for you guys to check out later if you need to kind of get a refresher on anything later on. But 
Yeah, we'll also uh, uh, have it posted up on the website. We'll have a, a banner on the front page that mm -hmm. you can click that will take to the video, take you to the video, take you to all the rules. Yes, 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 yes. So we'll have all the information for you guys. But uh, just like like usual, just send your entry e uh, entry email to zacoreliusofficial at gmail.com. You need to have a photograph uh, showing the kit you plan on using. And even if you're going to use like a bunch of different 30 minutes mission stuff, at least just kind of show the main kit you're going to be using just so that there's some proof uh, to see that it is a new project that you're working on and not uh, something that you did you know, months or years ago, whatever. Um, and importantly, uh, don't just like... Uh, have like your your little note uh, with your handwriting on there, writing your name, date, country, and then you also need to specify which category you plan to enter: painted versus unpainted. So you have like Zach, Korea, and the date, and then you know painted category on your little note. And then for your photograph, don't just like have that on top of the kit because this is just a box. I can't prove that the kit inside of here is new or brand new or not. I need to see the actual plastics, so you need to have it like showing the runners and everything like that. Or if you've got the kit just already snap built, that's fine <clears> as well too, as long as you haven't started doing any sort of like customizing or anything on it. Yes. Uh, Blaze asked the question, is scribing allowed? Yes, you can scribe. Yep, totally yep. fine. You can do that. Scribing is totally okay. Um, so yeah, that's what you need just for your entry email. Very simple, just use the title uh, of the email, just like 30 minutes missions contest just to keep it easy and uh, easy for me to keep things organized here on my end. Uh, and I think that should just about tell you guys everything you need to know as yeah. far as that goes. Yeah. Yeah. I think you covered everything. Um, mm -hmm. Prize wise, we have four different prize packs uh, mm -hmm. that the winners will be able to choose from. And uh, honestly, you can, if two people can pick the same pack if they want to from I think is is what we kind of uh, agreed upon because we have plenty of these. Mm. Um, so like prize pack A is a Master Grade Barbados, USA Gundam Nippers, the USA Gundam Hobby Knife, uh, and the full line of, of Mecha Decals. Um, that means every Mecha Decal that's out there you'll get. Uh, prize pack B would be a Master Grade Dynamis, and then all the same uh, stuff, the Nippers, um, and then Hobby Knife and Decals. Price pack C, you get a real grade red frame, real grade strike, and then kind of all the other stuff as we said before with a nipper knife and decal. And price pack D would be for a real grade Destiny, uh, real grade RX78. Um, in these price packs too, there'll also be 30 minute mission uh, prizes. Um, so when you go to the website, the, we'll, we'll have the price packs listed on there. Um, there will be 30 minute mission prizes with each one of these packs too that, that I obviously did not put in there yet so. <laughs> that's okay yeah so there'll be more stuff yeah in there as well too also uh joel at true gumpla is throwing in some prizes as well too so uh, like adam said we'll have the four winners so basically the first and second place in each category uh on the painted and unpainted side so a total of four uh but then we're going to have a, a third place uh, in each category uh a third winner in each category as well too and those two people will win fifty dollar gift cards to uh true gun plus online shop as nice. well too so very cool thank you joel very yeah, much joel, for thank that you very much. uh and you know there may be more prizes that we add in along the way as well too something i might throw some stuff in there as well too so we'll let you guys know about that but uh that is i think just about it but like i said i'll have a video over on my channel later on uh, to explain all the rules again in in full detail, and then we'll have it in text as well too on the website and on Facebook for you guys. But the main thing is just get started thinking on some customs that you want to make with Thirty Minutes Missions. I would highly recommend you guys to do two things if you want to enter the contest. Number one, go back and watch some of the feedback videos that we've been doing from the Clean versus Weathered contest from the previous contest that just wrapped up. Uh, we've been doing feedback videos. We did uh, one here, Adam and I did, and then we did one on uh, a couple on my channel, looking at the weathered contest uh, entries, and then a few over on Chris's channel as well too, Chris Pavs, uh, looking at some more of the clean entries. So uh, watch. Go, even if you didn't enter in the last contest, go back and watch some of those just so you can see how me and the other judges uh, gave our feedback for those so you can get a good sense of what we're looking for as far as like judging contests like this. If you're kind of fairly new to entering contests, that'll be very helpful for you guys, I think. So highly recommend you to do that. 
Number two is uh, look at some custom builds for inspiration on Twitter. It's a great place uh, to find those. So if you just search like the hashtag, just like hashtag 30 minutes missions, or just like 30 mm uh, there on on Twitter, you can find a lot of really cool custom. So you know, look for inspiration. <laughs> yep. Copying, wink, wink, or you know, whatever you can find on there. But there's a lot of cool stuff around on there. And if you need some ideas, uh, because 30 minutes mission stuff, I mean, it's so customizable that it almost can be a little bit overwhelming. And you're like, I could do virtually anything with this. So it's kind of hard to know where to start. So you know, look around for some ideas and get some inspiration. That'll probably help you to kind of see which way you might want to go with that. But, yep. It'll be cool. I think we'll see some very cool entries. Yeah, I'm excited. There's mm -hmm. there's so much you can do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just feel like I haven't seen a ton of people working on them, especially as like as far as like Western modelers. I see some stuff like on like Japanese Twitter uh, from, from time to time. There's a few builders that kind of mess around with them a lot. But it's just for how many kits there are out there for like how much product exists out there. I just feel like I don't really see them around that much. That is interesting. Uh, Chris, so wasn't there a Plum on a Trend episode uh, focusing on 30 Minutes Missions might be worth looking at? I believe we did do one of those. I think, yeah, uh, a few months back, Josh and I. So you can go back and check that out too, if you can find that. I'm not sure which episode number that was, but uh, yeah, that'll be over there on my channel. All right, so I hope you guys are excited about that. And again, if you have questions, you know, get in touch with me. I can answer your questions about that. If you're not sure about anything, you know, just ask. Uh, I'll let you know. But for now, let's get back to some more questions. And then here in a little bit, we'll get to the giveaway stuff. Uh, Gumpla Joey asked, do you think the PG Unleashed series will grow to be the new staple for the PG line? Um, so I don't think unleashed unleashed is i i think is kind of like their marketing thing for that perfect grade kit um you know they'll they'll probably i'm assuming make a 2.0 zaku i would i would think in the future I, I have no idea if they are or not um i don't know if they would call that unleashed kind of like the revive kits um that was done as a marketing thing mm. um i don't even think they use revive like the rx the new high grade coming out doesn't even have revive on it yeah, um they don't use it anymore yeah. yeah so even even when we order those revive kits it's not even in the name anymore so um yeah. we put up revive oh, so yeah. people know to so i think it's just a marketing term yeah. um that i don't know if they will continue using that marketing for future perfect grades they might i don't know yeah yeah i would also agree that i wouldn't expect to see it you know being the staple for the pg line i think we could very likely see maybe one or two uh more unleashed pgs someday in the future i think the zaku 2 is a, is a good bet you know but i don't know uh for however popular you would think the zaku is it doesn't seem like bandai's it seems like he, bandai is like someone's twisting their arm to release zaku kids I mean, like if someone's there suggests let's do a unicorn kit they're like yes yeah let's do an rx72 yes let's do a zaku yeah maybe later <laughs> seems yeah. like that kind of thing so i don't know uh you would think that's their bread and butter but i don't know uh alex asked do you remember your first model kit ever yep i actually have it here in the storefront it's a uh no grade one 100 red frame Hmm. when we when i move there i'll have to get mine out i have my old kits as well too i have to put mine there in the storefront nice. as well too people to see right. yeah mine was uh the 100 scale uh shenlong okay kit. nice yeah as far as i can remember yes uh hey can it uh, favorite design from gundam sentinel hmm. um hummingbird so for me from. hummingbird hummingbird I like the hummingbird a lot. I think that's a that's for me. Red or blue? Blue. Uh huh. Blue. Yeah. I liked um uh, E Day made mm -hmm. a uh, a blue type hummingbird kit um for I want to say it was one of the Gundam bases or something like that for Bandai. Um, that looks like a amazing uh, amazing kit. I would love if Bandai would make one. Yeah. Fingers crossed. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a tough one. I don't know. Uh, favorite design from Gun of Sentinel? I mean, probably the XS, uh, but there's so many good ones. It's kind of yeah. basically, I think, the probably the XS would have to be the main one. Then everything else is, you know, very tied for a very close second after that. I could say definitely the Zeku Zui is probably my least favorite. <laughs> the yeah, like kind yeah. of final boss Zeku is just too over the top. Uh, although, I mean, I have seen some very cool custom builds of people like Scratch building that kit, mm -hmm. and it, they look awesome, but it's not my favorite design. Very weird. Uh, Ryan, I don't know if Ryan's still watching, but Ryan uh, Lau did that awesome custom build using the, uh, what was it? The, it's not G frame. I don't think it was G frame, was it? Uh, uh, I don't know. Or something. I don't know if he, I, he, I saw him. Oh, there he's he is. Here, uh, yeah. He's in the chat. <laughs> what was that, Ryan? Was it a uh, G frame or something else? I don't, yeah, I don't think it was G frame. Universal unit. There it is. Thank yeah, you. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that came out awesome. So I mean, when I see it done well, uh, it's it's cool to see, but it is a weird design. Yeah. All right. Um, let's switch over to the YouTube community tab here. We can, don't have too much time left. I want to make sure we get some of these as well here too. Uh, are you going to? Are there going to be any RE100 issues this year? I've been waiting all year and haven't seen a single one come back around. So I, I think he means the reissues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we had some in January. Uh, what were they? Were as um, oh crap! Why can't I think of the name of it? It wasn't the Bawu. Uh, it's a green one. The green one with the the. Uh... Hamahama. Yes, we uh. did get some Hamahamas in January. Um, mm -hmm. but and then I think we got some Gerberas in January mm -hmm. as well. But as far as other REs, no. They sent us a order form in January or February asking us if they did remake them, how many would we want? Mm -hmm. But then it but it wasn't like a normal order form where it's like, hey, you're ordering these for this month. It was if we did make them, how many would you want? And then we might make them sometime and give them to you type mm. order form. So mm. sad. Yeah. Sad, sad. There's some good ones. There are some good yeah. ones. Yeah. We've loved the series not to die, but certainly how it looks. All right. Ricky B asked any word on the Kraken dress kits coming in? Uh, we got half our order. We're waiting on the other half. Mm. So, um, we'll, we'll send an email to everyone that hasn't gotten those yet on, on the update for that. Okay. Uh, he also had a second part of his question here. He said, and has there been an update on the MG F91 P Bandai kit? I'm assuming he's talking about the twin buster one and we should be getting those. Um, I think there's like two or three people that ordered them a, a while ago. Uh, okay. Um, and then customs, just lost um one of our boxes of them um mm -hmm. but uh but yeah i think we uh i think we ordered yeah. two i think we just ordered some off ebay to fill those orders and just paid more than what we should have paid for them but that way those people weren't getting screwed over yeah uh jeremy asked why do you think we haven't seen an mg kshatra even though we've seen larger mgs like the deep striker I, I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, so, I would just say that it's it's kind of hard to say, like, well, if we got the Deep Striker, then why not make the Kshatra? Because, like, if you, how many MGs are we up to in the line over 20 years of MGs? How many, like, big ones have they made? Like, the O, the Deep Striker. And so they're like, once a decade, they make a, a huge MG. Yeah. And those are two actually very different kits if yeah, you, yeah, yeah you know you're you're, you're kshatriya you're you're looking at way more posability than than the deep striker um mm, yeah, or yeah, you're yeah. you're hoping for way more posability yeah. uh which would mean probably better engineering especially how heavy you know some of the some parts of that kit mm -hmm. will probably be with all the plastic um and so maybe they're just waiting to actually have their technology catch up to where they can actually produce something that's of, of good quality that people will enjoy versus putting some out there that is going to not be something that would be top tier, uh, a product from them is sure. most likely why they're, they haven't done it yet. Yeah. I mean, 
I would venture to guess that there's people at Bandai too who would love to make it. There's, yeah. I'm sure there's engineers <clears throat> at Bandai who have been like side project working on plans for making an MG Kashatra or something, and they're just like hoping that you know the guys upstairs will give them the the green light to start you know proper production on that. But you know, I, I'm sure they would love to make it as much as we would love to have it. It's just. Yeah. You know, one of those things. Uh, but yeah, you're right. I mean, it's it's very different from the Deep Striker, and even the O is is also kind of a bit of a brick. It's just a big fat thing. So yeah, and they haven't even they haven't reproduced the mm -hmm. O kit in gosh five six years. So mm -hmm. yeah, they haven't reprinted that kit in forever. Yep. Uh, Tyler W said, "Did you have anything?" Uh, did you have anything good out of that Shining Fates? <laughs> um, nothing that I wanted. I was hoping for that that uh, Charizard, but no, nothing, nothing yet. Nothing yet. Pokemon pulls. Yeah. Uh, I, I was telling Adam before the show we were talking that I've been resisting the urge to kind of fall back into that uh, Pokemon card uh, rabbit hole, but I have kind of uh, kind of found a way around it by buying a couple of packs for my kids. <laughs> <laughs> so it kind of gives a little bit of that gratification just by like giving it to them. And you know, I don't really care about like telling them, put that card in a sleeve. <laughs> <It's> right. a, <laughs> not that big a deal. Uh, but uh, let's see. Uh, my son pulled like a, a holographic Porygon Z, which was pretty cool. Ooh, nice. And uh, there was there was one more that they had to another holographic. I think it was a another Pokemon I was not really that familiar with one of the newer ones. I don't really know all that well, but uh, yeah, Chris Pab say, hey, hey, yeah, you yeah. already have your Genshin gotcha impact addiction. Yes, exactly. I, I already have plenty preoccupied with Genshin oh. impact. I don't need to get into Pokemon cards. I have not gotten into that. Thank goodness. <sighs> you need to. It's, so good. Yeah, <laughs> it's such a good, it's such a fun game. <clears throat> I love it. The problem is now that there's a, there's a limited event going on now a limited time event and it's about to be over and i've not finished all the stuff and i have uh, no time no. to do the event stuff <laughs> it's like i uh, it's like struggling because i need to sleep at night but like that's the only other time i have to yeah. finish all the event stuff before the event's gone this sunday so i'm depressed about that anyway uh what will happen if banda decided to uh do a mass remaster of old fan favorite kits so i don't know but what i would guess what he means by that would be like maybe like like a series of old kits i don't know what that really means you know how to interpret that question no um if bandai mass remastered popular kits they would just sell a bunch of them i guess i don't yeah, know. I, I know. <laughs> there you go <laughs> yeah I, but i mean I they've know. already they already do that though with popular kids yeah so that's, that's why you have the 3.0 arc 78 that's why you have 2.0 freedoms that's why you have the yeah. remastered strike uh you know, master grade kit uh even you know revived high grade kits you know they're remaking uh high grade kits and, and stuff like that so mm -hmm. um yeah, and then they're always going to start with the more popular designs first over the non-popular designs, usually when they start doing things like that. So, And I think the the thing of if you're talking about like a, a mass remaster, so I guess that he means like just like they just did a bunch of those. The thing is that they wouldn't do them all at yeah. once because they'd flood the market. So they'd have to still space them out. Uh, and they wouldn't have the capacity to yeah. do um, something like that, too, because then they wouldn't be able to make any reprints. You know, nothing would get reprinted. And it, it, yeah, it just wouldn't be, it's not, it wouldn't be a smart business move on their part. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Tabris asked what hyped up release was the biggest disappointment either from the sales or a build point of view, for example, the Tristan being recycled from the HG Alex. Um, so as far as sales wise, um, every now and then you'll get like a high grade kit from a build series, like build fighters, build mm -hmm. divers that, that doesn't do very good uh very good that you think would do very well yeah. um most master grades it doesn't matter what it is those sell very well most real grades doesn't matter yeah. um they sell very well and that's usually because 
they've already sold a bunch of the high grade variant of it and they know mm -hmm. it's going to do better in, in a, in sure. a, so the, the kits that you have a more likely a hood of not doing well is, is your, your high grade kits. Now the master grade, um, the, the build fighters age, um, crap, it was age something age two. Yeah. Uh -huh. Build the build divers one. Um, that did, did not do very well as a, sure. as a master grade. Yeah. Um, it was called the age two something though. I thought it wasn't just, yeah, no, I can't yeah. remember. that's why it did bad. Cause no, yeah. you know, it's a, yeah, I guess. um, yeah, so we, we, th those did very, um, not very well. And, and, and you know, to go to back to someone else's question, what do you do with kits? We actually did discount those to mm -hmm. kind of blow through uh, a mass amount that we had as well of that kit. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was one, I, I skipped that one as well too. Cause I mean, it was just kind of like, yeah, and that's one know. that they uh, they Just did. Magnum. Mag yeah, yeah, Magnum. They yeah. um they came out with the high grade and the master grade. I think got announced very close to the same time, so they didn't mm. have any sales history or anything with the high grade kit to see if that kit would actually warrant a master grade or or a different you know higher end um, mm. kit. So yeah, and it's kind of interesting because you. You, you see some people asking sometimes like why Bandai has not made more master grades from the uh, build either build divers or build fighters. They've only really made a few. There's like this the uh, the strike what was that the build strike build strike Sengoku Astray Sengoku um, Astray the Mark II well, that one yep. also seemed to kind of flop as well too. Yeah, yeah, it did not do. Yeah, and then from been... from build divers as well. I think just the H two Magnum, right? I think that's the only one. Yeah, I think it's just those. Um... So, <laughs> out of the very few that they've done, most of them have not done that well, right? <laughs> so, as far as sales go, I think probably the single crash rate is probably in the most popular one. I would say, right? Or the yeah, build that. Strike, maybe. Yeah, the build strike was good. Like they even mm -hmm. they had had the um, what is it the. Uh, I want to say the backpack pack. for it. Yeah, they yeah. had that too, but they haven't even remade those in forever. Yeah. yeah. Um, so. Mm. Yeah. So I mean, if if you're looking for a reason why Bandai hasn't made more of those MGs from those series, because the ones that they did try didn't really do all that well. So I don't know. I think I think that series is made for selling high grades, right? Yeah. Like that's the target audience, and that's kind of the thing is that those are just those are it's a high grade. <laughs> centered series so uh, i wouldn't expect to see a lot of especially i mean now that the series have already come and gone uh, i wouldn't expect to see any, any more master grades out from any of those series uh if ben diver releases a 1.5 or 2.0 uh, line for rg which would you like to see and why um probably arc 78 and and the saku i think both those had the same frame didn't like the first five have the same frame, something uh, like that. And yeah, um, yeah, probably something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So the the and they can they could use a, a little bit of an update, but mm -hmm. just because those were the first ones in that in that sure. line. Uh, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say that those would be the ones that I would like to see, and but those were the ones I would definitely. Uh, put my money on if they were going to remake, remake any i would say of course the rx 72 mm -hmm. uh to make a 2.0 rg of that and i wouldn't i mean i would expect that <laughs> sometime probably within the next few years i think that's very possible that's going to happen if not uh, maybe like for the 45th anniversary or something like that that could mm -hmm. very well happen yeah, definitely um Zaku, even though I was just saying that I wish Zaku got some more love, I mean, I don't know how, I just because the RG line is not really my favorite line in general. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if I would really get all that excited about a, a 2.0 RG Zaku yeah. 2, but maybe. And I honestly, the 2.0 Zaku 2 is pretty good as it is. I think it has a couple of weak points, but for the most part, I think it's totally fine. I, I actually find the RG 72 perfectly fine as well, too. I don't really think it's anywhere near as bad as, as some people kind of make it out to be. Of course, the one that people always complain about is the Zeta. I've never built one, uh, but I'm sure uh, that would be one that probably a lot of people would say they would want a 2.0 of. But yeah. I, it's one of the, I mean, for what the kit is, if you want it to be fully transformable in 144 scale, I mean, it's going to be a mess. I don't know if they could really do it better than they already did. I don't know yeah. how. Uh, all right. 
why don't the discount codes for email confirmations of orders don't work anymore? They should work. Um, I see people using them all the time. So if, if you got one that's not working, I would recommend just emailing our support. Um, but mm -hmm. they they uh, should be working. I know we had a glitch there for a little bit where like it would give old dates. But the code still worked, but it would say mm -hmm. it expired mm -hmm. way before you even got the email. But um, yeah, just send mm -hmm. us an email. If it's not working, we can get, always get you another code. Sure, sure. Uh, a couple last ones here, and then we'll get to the giveaway. Uh, Mr. V asked, given the latest Death Scythe, how likely do you think it is that we'll uh, get a new HD Death Scythe Hell uh, in the next year or so? Uh, I think, especially with that new Breaker kit that's coming out that has the cloak of the Death yeah. Scythe Hell, basically, I think it's very likely. But yeah. you never know. They had that uh, that Build Fighters kit that came out before that was like partially an Ultron, right? Yeah. And yeah. they've still not made an HD Ultron. So, um, but I, they've not finished the the like original series of HDs first, so they have to make the Shenlong first. Yep, Shenlong. And then yeah. I think, yeah, very possible. Then after that, they will make the Death Scythe Hell and the Ultron as well too. Very possible. Yeah, yeah. I would, I would think so. Mm. Um. Uh, Chris Jones uh, asked. Oh, and just uh, you guys uh, watching live in the chat, uh, go ahead and start putting popping some questions in there. We'll take a couple of live questions here uh, once we get to doing the giveaway here in just yep. a second. But Chris Jones asked, uh, it's a question to me specifically. What's some advice you wished someone had given you uh, before living overseas? Um, That's a good, good question. I'm, I'm, I want to know too. Someone had given me before living overseas. I mean, uh, I don't know, you know, how much better I would have followed this if someone had told me this ahead of time. But I mean, like, I guess if there's one thing that I could say, maybe that I wish I would have done differently in my time living overseas is maybe just like be better about keeping in touch with people back home, like family included, <laughs> family and friends back home. I mean. I like I'm here and like living my life and especially now I'm married and have kids and so everything's pretty crazy. But even before that, when I was just, you know, a single guy or, you know, just had a girlfriend and I had more free time, uh, I've never been very good about like keeping in touch with people back home. So that's something that, you know, probably could have, should have, would have done maybe a little bit better, but at the same time, I don't know. I mean, I was just doing my thing. So <laughs> it's a tricky one. Yeah. But otherwise, I mean, I don't know. I'm, nothing really. Uh, I don't know that I wish I would have known ahead of time. Uh, through my time of staying here and just like working here in Korea, I, I paid off my student loans. And so I yeah, did pretty good about that, proud of that. So I uh, think I've been kind of okay, <laughs> basically. I haven't had like culture shock or anything, even though it's such a, I mean, obviously, very different culture here. Uh, but that's never really affected me at all. So I'm pretty easy going. So I've never really had to deal with kind of that sort of stress. You get like the microaggression <laughs> stuff every every now and then. Some things will bother me, but uh, for the most part, it's pretty okay. Nice. All right. Uh, let's do some winners here. So you do we got that. two kits to give away. Yep. So I'll do one and then the other one. Let me pop this up on screen for you guys. Full transparency. Uh, so first off, we will be doing the Gundam Mark V. There. Um, let me see here. So between the three platforms, one Facebook, two Instagram, three YouTube. Uh, oh, shoot. Hang on. Sorry. I need to s start it on a different number because it's hard to know. Yeah, there okay. we go. Yeah, so try again. And a three. So from YouTube, we had 175 comments. So those. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's a low number. Oh, great. That's oh, fantastic. Man. I can count that very easily now. And we, we probably already saw it. So all right. Eighth comment. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight. Hey. Hey. I'm so glad that I don't have to count the 100 <laughs> yeah. or something. Congratulations. That's fantastic. <laughs> Eon Eater, yes, the, uh, who asked about the 
uh, 1.0 or 1.0 or 2, 1.5 or 2.0 yeah. RG questions. So yeah, so very good. Yep. Awesome. Uh, uh, Adam. Yep. My fun little spiel. Now that you have one, we please send us an email to support at usagunnamstore.com. We just need a screenshot with you logged into your YouTube account just to prove that it is you. Uh, and we need the address that you want it shipped to. Uh, please send us an email um, with those two things so we can get that kit out to you. Uh, we are putting now a time frame uh, mm -hmm. of six weeks on there. Um, if you don't claim your prize within six weeks, it will get, you know, we'll, we'll put it into another video to give it mm -hmm. to somebody else. So uh, we've had a few prizes where just they've never contacted us. Mm -hmm. um, so please send us that email. We definitely want to get you your prize. Yeah. Um, to support at usagunnamstore.com. If you have one in the past, you guys just do the same thing. Send us an email proving that it was you uh, with the address you want it sent to, and we can get that out to you because we, we do have a, a few prizes that we have done that um, you know we, we definitely want to get out. So, Not been claimed. Yeah. Got to follow up on that, guys. If you're going to yeah, enter a contest, yeah, you got to yeah, check yeah. if you actually won. Uh you know, and have notifications on for like your YouTube or whatever, if you're entering on YouTube, because I mean, if you don't have notifications on, I always uh, will put a little reply like this on something. So if you have those notifications on that, you like, you'll get email notifications. You should get that. You should see that pop up in your email. Uh, but all right, we've got one more to give away. Yeah. Let's get the B kit, which I previously attempted to give away and it was the case that that person has not gotten in touch with me to claim it. So we'll try this one more time. And then if no one claims it, then I'm putting it in the trash. <laughs> All right. Uh, from YouTube again this time. All right. It's YouTube. Nice. Lucky spot. So give me a little number again once again here. Come on. 60. All right. Not so bad. Okay. All right, uh, I'll count here. Adam, yeah. you go ahead and answer a couple of questions while I'm yeah, counting. Yeah, so uh, Chris asked, do you think that the uh, workstation type stores where you rent out a workstation paint booth like they have in Korea would be successful in the West? Um, I think they would be successful probably in more urban areas, um, like maybe New York, San Diego, places where there's you know a lot of people and uh, not a lot of spaces kind of here in urban and non-urban areas, you, your houses are bigger and usually have a garage and, and things like that, that you can, you can have your own workstation at. So yeah, I, I think depending on the location, um, I think they could do pretty good, uh, especially if you have a store, a hobby store and you're having a lot of traffic and a lot of people buying stuff. Um, you definitely know if they did pretty good or not. Uh, da, da, da. uh, are the last of the judges still expected by end of June? Probably not. Um, they should be here any day. They, they are here in the U S. Um, but they haven't shipped to us. So even if they ship to us today, it'd probably be here, um, early July, I, I would think. So like I said, just keep an eye on your email and we'll, we'll get those out to you. It looks like you're uh, done counting there, Zach. I'm done. Yes, right. I'm ready. Uh, so it's just the next one down here, just below Noob Plug Builder. So sorry, Noob uh, Plug Builder. Sorry, Noob Plug. Just missed it. But the winner is going to be here, Karim Kam. Sorry for the mispronunciation there terribly. Yeah, and he yeah. lives in Turkey, which he put hey. in there for us. So right. that'll be fun shipping that out. <laughs> All right. Uh, when will the international shipping be available again? I live in Turkey. It uh, so it is available to certain places. It honestly depends on your country and what your country's regulations are. Um, as more stuff opens up, we'll be able to add more things, uh, open more things up for international shipping. Um, as far as if you're in the the European Union, probably not anytime soon, um, because of the new laws that they have put up there with tax stuff. Um, but there are stores there that you can order stuff from. So, oh, yeah. Uh, international shipping is crazy. I don't even know if I'll be able to ship to Turkey from here. Uh, I'll have to, I'm just thinking, like, <laughs> I have to call the post office on Monday and find out if it's even possible. It probably should be okay. I'll have to look into that. Um, hopefully, uh, I'll hear from. Karim Khan this time so I can actually get rid of this kit. Uh, but if I 
if I don't hear from him or if I'm unable to ship to Turkey, then we'll have to draw again. But hopefully that works out and we can get him the prize. But anyway, congratulations again to yes. both of the winners. Good job, guys. guys. Congrats. Yes, a couple um, of great kits. There is a question by Josh Street there in the in the chat. Um, mm. Adam, when can we... Uh, oh, Adam, can we use the Bandai monthly delivery schedule to see what might be getting restocked? Yes, you can. Um, those restock schedules are not a finalized thing. Um, so sometimes if it shows that it's on there, it does not mean that kit will get restocked. Those are based on our order lists that we get and then Bandai's production schedule. And then if they get behind, that means they have to cut something off or they might just not make enough to deliver out to the whole world. So only certain regions will get that kit. Um, but you can use this as kind of like a guideline on stuff that we should be getting in, but doesn't guarantee that we will get it in. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, I just, uh, Dustin had a good idea there in, in the chat saying that to better yet add it to the 30 minutes missions prize pool. <laughs> yeah, so if, if well, once again, no one claims it, then yeah, it'll, it can be in the prize pool for the new contest. So, yes. Yes, if you guys are coming into the video a little bit later and you missed uh, us talking about the contest earlier, you know, go back and watch that. But uh, I have the video that's going to be going up on my channel uh, explaining all the rules and everything all in, in great detail. We didn't talk about the guest judges. Oh, uh, shame. Uh, <laughs> you've got uh, two amazing guest judges that are going to be joining us again this time. Uh, Kevin Zhang, uh, DBWC Master Extraordinaire from the U.S., uh, and also win I'm Wong, uh, paint pusher from Thailand, also a GBWC winner. Yes. Uh, not only Thailand, but also GBWC champion as well, too. So, um, yeah, those two amazing judges will be joining to help us choose the winners of that. So, yeah, uh, the video on my channel is uh, scheduled to go up at midnight, which is in... 20 minutes from now. So if you guys want to watch that, uh, just go head over to my channel in about 20, 30 minutes and you'll be able to uh, watch that video. That'll be live on there and you can get all the contest details and everything in, uh, for you guys all laid out. So the contest is starting from today and then you have until August 20th, eight weeks for that. Uh, all, uh, all 30 Miss Missions stuff. So check it out. Very cool. It'll be fun. Adam. Uh, thank you, as always. Yeah, no, thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, everyone that orders with us. Um, you know, we wouldn't be here without you guys. So thank you guys so much uh, for uh, you know, everything, you know, all the orders, the patience with all the, you know, delays on things coming in and shipping delays, uh, all sorts of different stuff. So, but, you know, like I said, with without you guys, we would not be able to do what we love. So thank you guys so much. Mm. Yes, and uh, thanks for everybody hanging out, uh, watching these videos, and those of you guys who left comments, you know, uh, left your comments to enter in the giveaway and your questions for us. You know, sorry we can't get to all the questions uh, every time. We can only get to so many, but uh, thank you for you know leaving your questions there for us. And you know, we'll be back in two weeks with another episode and another giveaway. So check that out. Uh, I'll maybe give you guys an update then at that point too. Uh, once we're two weeks into the contest, I'll let you guys know. Like, how many entries we're getting in so far and how it's going with that. And I'll try to share some stuff. Um, one thing that I want to do too is uh, just share inspiration on uh, social media with you guys as well too. So any yeah. cool 30 minutes missions, custom builds and things that I'm coming across online, I'll be sharing that uh, as often as I can just to try to give you guys some inspiration as well too. Uh, so just watch out for that. Make sure you're following everybody, following the USA Gundam Store, Facebook, Instagram, my Facebook page and Instagram. Uh, aside from just my YouTube page, it's a good way to just keep in touch uh, with what's going on and everything. So follow us there. And that's it for today, guys. So yeah. thanks so much. Excited to see your 30 minutes missions builds. Till next time, y'all have a great day. Yeah. Bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs>